In It Together with Lori Lynn Green talk show is a positive way to start your day. Ready for some encouragement? Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. Come be inspired. Hear moving stories. Even laugh out loud. <laughs> Can't make heads or tails of what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just incomprehensible. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. You'll hear real people doing real things to make a real impact. You are heroes every day. Hear honest, compassionate, engaging issues you care about. You see people come together to do good in our community. And the more we come together, the more good we can do. Listen in and get started on redesigning your life. And hear what's positive in Greater Manchester. Here's your happy host, Lori Lynn Green. Good morning, friends in Greater Manchester. Welcome to In It Together. We are so glad that you've tuned in. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can go to inittogether.net, listen live or to previous shows, even link to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our YouTube, and even LinkedIn. Um, and if you like and follow us, you'll see that we're bringing out the best in people to influence positive change in this community and beyond. Today is Personal Safety Day with Master Trainer of Defensive Strategies, Bob Bollard, and special guest, State Representative John Burt. And we'll be talking about concealed carry today. So be, be back right after this brief message. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and owner of AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. I've been very successful at helping people overcome stressful situations to get immediate results in their personal and professional lives. At Alpha Advancement Strategies, we provide a non-judgmental and supportive environment, empowering clients to focus more on reaching their goals. You can find us on the web at alphaadvancementstrategies.com or call us at 603-860-9260. Alpha Advancement Strategies is where you invest in yourself. Hi, I'm Mark Major, certified coach and speaker. Join me Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for It's a Wonderful Life, all about leadership development and living a positive lifestyle. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Hi, I'm Bob Bola, Chief Instructor of Defensive Strategies and anchor of the Personal Safety Segment, where we talk about personal protection, situational awareness, and home defense. Tune in every Thursday at 9 a.m. and refuse to be a victim. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Welcome back to Nita Together, kicking off personal safety this morning. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How about you, John? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. Good to have you here this yes, morning. Yes, thank you. Uh, Bob told me you were coming, and he has a topic this morning on concealed carry. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that's been going on with that. I actually was just reading about a house bill that passed that's talking about Concealed carry across state lines. Now, this is national, right? Yes. Oh, reciprocity, national yeah. reciprocity. And it did pass. It did. Well, on the House, right? Yes, it always passes the House. Yeah. It's the Senate. Okay. But we control the Senate, so or the, or the Republicans do. So, so you're, I'm you're, you're hopeful on that. I I'm got my fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, first off, um, Bob, obviously you wanted to invite John, and I want you to be able to tell us why, because I'm sure that you know him as far as this topic goes. Mm -hmm. So, Well, John offers a lot of insight because he, uh, well, one, he's originally from Vermont, all right? So, and Sorry. he's been, he's been, yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> the old Vermont. <laughs> yeah, the old Vermont, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're actually going more anti-gun than we are right now. So, uh, but, you know, he's been concealed carrying for, for many years. And so what I wanted to try to do was try to, you know, uh, just pick his brain and see what kind of stuff he's been up against. But, you know, by doing this, maybe he can offer some insight as far as tips that he would give to the to the newbies, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's that's my head. That's what I was thinking. So OK, <laughs> yes. well, that's good. I mean, obviously, John's been on here a couple of times and I, I know yep. him well. Actually, he's a state rep in my my town. 
yes. always has my vote. I have even yeah. supported his campaigns. I shouldn't say that on that. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't care because see, we're not we're not part of the media where we have to not endorse and all that stuff. I can say whatever I want. Yes, um, which is that's nice. Free. Yes, that's what we like. Um, anyway, so John, welcome. We're really glad that you're here. Uh, why don't you give a little bit of your uh, background? And I, I don't have the extensive list, just so that people have an idea of, you know, who you are, wh- where you, s- how you serve, and and. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I am originally from the old Vermont. Uh, Vermont mm-hmm. used to be the most conservative state in the nation, even more than New Hampshire ever thought of being. Uh, but sadly, uh, the built the highways and the trust fund babies came out of New York City, and the Massachusetts people moved up and ruined the state. So in 1998, I defected to New Hampshire uh, for freedoms, and, uh, you know, this is where I landed. And what was funny is, I think I've told Bob this, is I was concealed carrying for nine months, and then somebody said that I had to have a concealed carry license. And I was like, what is that? Because I'm from Vermont. You know, there's no license. There's no nothing back then. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I went and I had to get one. I was not happy. So that's why I'm very passionate when it passed. Now, interesting that you say that because the hardest thing is when you have rights and then they're taking away. Yes. That, that is, it's, it's kind of like a, a, when you work for a company and you have all these benefits and then they downsize and they start taking away your vacation time and they start to, I mean, you start to slowly feel like, feel like uh, your freedom's taken away. Yes, and that's what's <laughs> happening this year at the state house. There's uh, oh, seven or <laughs> six uh, very anti-gun bills in the house. Yeah, and it's this is why I feel like Bob. It's good that he brought this topic up because we know that they're going. There's a lot going on, and and first off, a lot of the things we like to do here is kind of debunk some of the lies that people believe about things. I mean, yes, sensible people but uninformed people a lot of times. Uh, because they get a lot of their information through media that isn't necessarily truth-telling, uh, and they change language and make, um, I guess you could say, make things, kind of use fear to get people um, to lean a certain way. Uh, what I'd like to know is, um, you know, why, you know, there's a lot of fear about firearms and stuff like that, but I want to know what it is that, you think uh, I'm trying to get this question out what do you th- what it is that you think that people need to know as far as carrying a firearm that that has been s- made bigger than it needs to be made you know what i mean that has scared people um, well, sadly, they've made these gun-free zones. In New Hampshire, uh, if you have a mm-hmm. New Hampshire concealed carry license and you legally can carry, you can carry in a school here. Mm-hmm. And I know many teachers that are carrying. Okay. And there are two bills in the house that they want to remove that right. Mm-hmm. And I got I went to the education depart uh, uh, education committee on the house side, and I told them I said if you pass this bill, when not if, but when there is a school shooting, because there will be sadly, you know, because they're removing the guns out of the mm-hmm. school. And let me explain that after I get done with sure. this. Sure. Um, I said the blood will be on your hands. Those dead children's blood will be on your hands for right. passing this. And what happened is uh, we have a new attorney. Uh, he's a state rep out of Salem. Great guy. Very gun friendly. I mean, he's, uh, you know, 100% on my side. So it's, uh, you know, nice to have him there, even though we're outnumbered. He's a defense lawyer in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. He's asked many criminals that do a lot of break-ins in mass. He goes, you know, you don't have to answer this question, but I'm just curious. Why don't you come to New Hampshire and rob us? You know, mm-hmm. break into houses. He said every one of them that he's asked, which has been many, uh, we're not going to New Hampshire. You guys carry guns. We don't know which ones have the guns. And so they leave us alone. And he said that it's easy pickings. In Massachusetts, because chances are, when they break into a house, they're going to be safe. Now that if if that yeah. isn't common sense right there, just yes. the thought yeah. process. I mean, of mm-hmm. course, if you if if you decided to change your career move, which I don't advise, and you wanted to become a criminal, um, which target would you take? It, Bob and I talk about this all the time. It's yeah. always the easy target. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's not rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what's going to happen if they remove guns out of schools. Right. You know, it's not an issue right now, you know, and I had one gentleman say, well, what happens if a teacher killed a kid? Oh, jeez. And and I said the chances of that happening are are very slim because these are trained teachers that are carrying, that I know of. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And but, we don't think all teachers should have firearms. We no. don't think ev- anybody, no. everybody should have firearms. No, I, I think it should be only <laughs> trained, willing teachers. Right. And uh, so what I look at is that, you know, these teachers are willing to do this. Now, once they remove the guns, you know, those same teachers, they're going to throw their bodies over these students like they did in Parkland. In Parkland police, and I pray and I know our local police here in Goffstown and other areas would not do this, but there was three policemen at Parkland that just sat out there as the children screamed as they were being killed. Well, you know, it's interesting you said that they would throw themselves on the child. The reality is, is if you were to ask a teacher the option of being a sitting duck in a classroom with all these children who they love and they're responsible for nobody's a teacher unless they love these kids that's usually. right it, and you would ask them the option even me when i started uh you know carrying and, and learning firearm i had one sitting in, <coughs> in my house for like a year it was given to me and i wouldn't touch it until i took classes and got familiar and i had a lot of fears too that i had learned and i i looked at things wrong yeah. I, one thing i learned is to get rid of fear you need education yes and so the training and education taught me the right way and to be safe. How you know, this is what the military does. This is what our law enforcement does. They have to go through training. That takes away all the what ifs. Yes. All the questions that you would have. Yep. And so obviously we don't believe everyone should have that. We don't believe everybody should be in that position. Uh, but there's ways to know who, who who should be. When Bob gives a class, there's a, if they if they have to pass a test and you know different things. Once they do, he decides if they're safe. And before he gives them, you know that um, certificate of you know completion or whatever it is that he gives them. Yes. You know, and so I think that's a reasonable, logical conversation. And that's where we should be going toward. And and with Parkland, Florida, what ended up happening, and at the end, this commission came out and said, all right, this is our recommendations of protecting our students. The number one, we need more money. Of course they do. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and I agree to a point that they need to secure the building a little better. Uh, but then the second thing they came out with, we seriously need to look at arming our teachers. Well, and the other thing is they had they had law enforcement there. Yeah, that sat outside. They did nothing. They're not trained properly on how to handle that type of a situation. Well, and the Supreme Court says they don't have to defend us. Well, and that's that's another story, but yes. <laughs> just just hit it a little bit because I think it's important since you brought it up. Just yeah, uh, the a- Supreme Court. Uh, I can't remember the case, uh, but it was an individual versus you know the police mm-hmm. department, and the Supreme Court came back and said, "Look, the police do not have any obligation to de- to return a call, to go to a, a crime, or to defend anybody." Mm-hmm. Right, and, and that's an interesting thing. A lot of people don't realize that. Bob and I have talked about that here. They are there to to help society in general. Yes. Not you as the individual right. now, but but the children in the school, and, and I get that. But who who is better to protect the children than the ones that are there, yeah. who are with them, who are inside, who know what's going on? Is somebody yeah. coming from the outside? You got a you got a police officer, and this is nothing against police officers, but you got a police officers out there who have families too, and they're thinking, why would I go in there? Yes, I I I don't know what I'm going into. Yeah. Because they're cowards, that's why. <laughs> well, I I I don't know if I would totally say they're cowards, uh, although I somewhat agree. Yeah, I, I would agree with Bob. <laughs> uh, 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 n- that's fair enough. That's that's fair enough. But <laughs> everybody makes that decision, just like you say. When we carry, that we have that decision. Are we going to? When we have to know what the ramifications mm-hmm. are yes. of our decisions. So f- to be fair, if they weigh the ramifications and they're like, "I'm not dying today." Uh, you get it. Then, then we shouldn't be paying these guys. Okay. Fair enough. The, according to this <laughs> officer who stayed outside, he says he had no duty to protect. Okay. Yet the county is paying him good money every single year, in in order to do that right. to protect. He and let we, these kids die. Right. I get you, Bob, because, you know, I'm not a big person or whatever, but I certainly yeah. would have done whatever I could just yes. because it's who I am as a person. Yeah. It's, you, of course. You just, you just do what's right because it's right, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, well, in the stories I've read and the 
the uh, literature I've seen, most of these school shootings are from cowards. That's why they go to a school, because yeah. it's easy pickings. They understand that the police are going to show up in about eight minutes to ten minutes. But they still have another additional five minutes because the police have to stay outside and say, okay, how are we going to enter? How are we going to do this? How are mm-hmm. we going to make sure that we don't you know, shoot the wrong people? And so they're going to have this plan, and then they're going to enter the building. And that is, you know, so they're looking at, you know, 10 to 12, 14 minutes of free reign. And, and, but once you, from what I'm understanding is if you ever confront one of these cowards, they're going to go into a fetal position and go, <laughs> you know, leave me alone. Please don't hurt me. Yeah. Because they're, they are truly right. cowards. Right. So one thought, but, one thought, that, okay, Bob. One, one thing that is that law enforcement is trained to do now in an active shooter situation is engage as soon as possible. So the first officer on scene. Oh, is going to go in the building. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, because they they have found that that puts it that puts it into it quicker. Right. Okay. So they don't wait to in, in set up a perimeter and all that. Mm-hmm. So if if these guys in Florida were trained this way, then their then their training is fifteen years old. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. I'm glad yeah. I'm corrected on so, that uh, because you know that would be the correct thing to do is enter as fast yeah. as you can. Well, to... that's what I, that's it. The 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 quicker you move, the, yeah. the less people get hurt. And yeah. and when cops do go in, they are not going in to render aid to people who have been hurt. They mm-hmm. their number one focus is to stop that threat. Right. Okay. They are now training paramedics to go in with a warm entry with SWAT. Okay. So that. They can start working on the injured right away. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now paramedics are going into the building with with SWAT. Well, but doesn't areas. it make sense to start so. at the first place to not have anybody injured? Because I'm well, thinking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking places. Think about all the places currently that we have security. Let's just name some off. I mean, we have them at football games. Yes. Where else do we have? We have them at nightclubs. Uh, just about everywhere. Just I mean, about. well, the old Verizon. Uh, what is it now? Sanu. Yeah. yeah. You know the arena there. I mean, they have metal detectors, but it, it would be easy to grab something into there. Yeah. I know. I'm just just keep. What what else has that? That's that's what I'm trying yeah. to paint the picture of yeah. all these places that don't have our children, that we're willing to put security. Nobody thinks or blinks about it. Yeah. And now mm-hmm. we're thinking we we got these kids. We've seen the shootings. How do we protect it? Take away. Yeah people's rights yeah and, that and are law-abiding well and that's it and they're concealed carrying you know the children don't know the the, yeah. the teacher next to them don't doesn't know yeah. yeah there wasn't there wasn't there a guy who uh was it last year mm-hmm. or the year before i think the last couple of years there was a sh- church shooting in one city and a guy a, a guy who's ex-military had heard it from his house yes came out and actually that was a texas yeah. Yeah, texas yeah. okay so if he was disarmed what would have happened there yes yeah and he stopped it and, yep. and what we don't see a lot is the reporting of a lot of people who are stopping crimes. Well, that's not on their uh, anti-gun agenda. Yeah, it doesn't work, doesn't fit into the agenda. Yes. So okay. that's our problem. Yeah. That is our problem, yeah. and, and people need to yeah. wake up. Oh, that, absolutely. Thank, thank good. I th- say thank God for the internet and stuff. People are awakening yep. to the truth because they're alternatives of getting uh, the the truth from different sources now yep. uh, are out there. Uh, here's but, what I would say: if if there's fear tactics in it, I really suspect. Suspect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would suspect. Well, they that. do use that, but you know, <laughs> gun control, like I say, is not about guns. It's about control. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, their agenda is to basically, uh, you know, basically it's death by a thousand needle pricks. Okay. Remove this right. Move this right. Remove this right until eventually you've got nothing left, and that's what it's all about. Right. Okay. They want to completely disarm us. They don't want us to have guns because when we have guns, we have a recourse against the government. Right. And that was the whole entire purpose of the Second Amendment. That's why our forefathers gave it to us. So we have a recourse against the government. It ensures okay. the freedoms that we yes. have. Right, exactly. Yes. And that's why they put the Second Amendment so high up on the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that is the one thing that they absolutely hate and you know and you look over you know uh down to uh south america where venezuela first yes. thing they did was when they went socialist was remove all the guns 
So tell, look at those people. They have no recourse whatsoever. Tell now. us, tell you know, you're going into this now, and what does yep. this have to do with concealed carry? We'll, we'll it get, doesn't. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it all con- it all connects at some point. Yep. But you just said something. Tell tell us how you think this is going to happen. How what the, what the plan might be. In New Hampshire? No, I, wherever. Well, you just said that first thing they did in Venezuela. I mean, because that's a perfect example yep. of what not to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so tell tell us, you know, what did they do? They they removed the, their yep. gun well, rights? If you look at the trend, okay, mm-hmm. and this the latest thing is the red flag laws, okay? Okay. The red flag laws is so that, uh, you know, it happens in this state, it happens in this state, it happens in this state, and so now... A lot of states are they begin to adopt going, it from going ahead and doing yeah. that because it may save a life, okay? But these red flag laws are so prone to abuse; it's unbelievable, okay? Where your your you know uh, your friend or your family member can say, "Well, you know, this person has not been acting right. She's acting kind of weird. I think we should remove her guns," okay? And that's how it starts, okay? That's like profiling. Uh, it is. It is. It's it's thought control. Okay? That's no different than they remove uh, your guns because you may commit a crime. Well, we're okay, seeing this, a lot of yeah. that profiling yeah. stuff going on now, yeah. race and everything. You name it. Oh, if this so. if this law passed in New Hampshire, I would be the first one that they'll enact it on. Yeah. I'll be the first victim. I guarantee you. <laughs> you know, because they want me off the scene. <laughs> you want me on that. You identify and activate your personal and professional goals. If you seek to do more and be more, look up Mark on the web at johnmaxwellgroup.com slash M-A-R-C major or call 603-674-6818. Mark Major, growing leaders and adding value. Little Leapers and Knowledge Keepers Child Care and Preschool offers learning experiences that give kids a healthy sense of self and meaningful connections to the world around them. We teach children from a positive perspective so they learn healthy conflict resolution and develop character. Owner Jennifer Lever has over 28 years experience in child development. She's helped children learn to read as young as 18 months. Join our happy place where we make happy happen. Located in Pennardville, bordering Bedford and Manchester. Call today at 603-491-1780. Hi, I'm Ron Moore, anchor of the Storm Chaser segment, where we'll talk about severe weather in history, science, and today. Join me Fridays at 9 a.m. where you'll learn to be ready for any storm that comes your way. Only on In It Together with Rory Lynn Green. Hi, I'm Jen Lever, anchor of the Recovery Now segments. Join me Tuesdays at 9 a.m. where I offer support to families struggling with addiction, hear personal stories, learn the signs of addiction, and get help for your loved ones. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Welcome back to In It Together in the midst of personal safety talking about, well, we're going into talking about concealed carry, but we laid a little bit of a foundation, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a nice, if, nice if, try, Larry. If you could catch it, I don't know. I, I'm following it. But yeah. All right. Um, so when you wanted to talk about this topic, Bob, mm-hmm. you know, what were you thinking about? Is it, is it because of well, the legislation going on? Or? One thing with concealed carry is that a lot of people will do it sometimes. Okay? So Not stop judging all me. the time. Yep. Huh? Stop judging you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I have and, you here. You know, it's <laughs> it's just one of those things that yeah. when you actually need to protect yourself is the one time that you're going to have the gun at home. Right. All right? So not just yourself, uh, but you know, somebody basically else. I wanted to talk about it's it's a lifestyle change when you start carrying a gun. It really is. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And when you yeah. carry a gun all the time. Right. And, and and the the funny thing is, it's almost like having your wallet. You really forget about it. Right. Right. You know, the, yeah. there's are like, oh, it's bulky, but get, wear it a couple hours and you won't well, even I, notice. I, I carry a 38 special and, uh, you know, it's it's nice and light and small. And occasionally, you know, if I have it in my uh, waistband in the back, I'll sit in a chair. And if it has sides every now and then I'll bump it and I'll go, oh, yeah, I got my gun. You know, because <laughs> you know, I don't want to make sure it doesn't drop out. Right. You know, and it's just now, funny that there, you are, just there are a lot of people who have demonized people who carry or, you know, who walk around and carry as if they're dangerous and they get yes. all 
but the sad part is they a lot of people are really genuinely emotionally um, distraught by stuff like that. Yes. As yeah. if, you know, because those are the people that need an emotional support peacocks. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, so, you know, you said like a while, it, you, you don't forget about it. it. You know, when you're talking yeah. about a lifestyle change, um, you're talking about, mm -hmm. first off, you t you already said before the reason that we carry. Obviously, yeah. it's, yeah. it's oh, yeah. not to pr it's, protect it's for our rights, and it keeps, keeps, uh, keeps well, us. Well, my gun doesn't only <laughs> protect me. It protects people around me. Actually, you okay. protect you and your people around right. you. You might use so a gun. I have no duty to protect yeah. either, but I would. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the lifestyle change is, big, you know, basically we're we're dressing around the gun. Okay. I, I have an in the waistband holster, so basically now I'm buying my, my pants bigger. Than, okay. And it really is a lifestyle change, all right, mm -hmm. because now you start thinking about, well, can I go here, can I go there, all right? New Hampshire is, is awesome, all right, because we can, we can carry anywhere in New Hampshire, so we don't, have, we don't have those problems. But you go south to Massachusetts, and oh, my God, we have no preemption. There's no preemption laws in Massachusetts. What's a preemption law? Preemption law is that, uh, like in New Hampshire, we do have preemption laws, so no matter where you go in the state, the laws are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Only the state can regulate firearms and the use thereof, whereas Massachusetts, every town, every city can make their own ordinances and gun laws. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does one keep up with that kind of stuff? Well, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's yes. starting to be as citizens, we right. we almost have to be lawyers right. to live. Right. And that's, yes. you know, that's the problem with way that's than the problem think, but... with, the, with the new bills in, in, in Concord right now with the schools. Okay. They're, they want to allow the schools to determine whether they want guns or not. So how are we going to know which school mm -hmm. allows guns, which schools don't, okay? So they do when, it by district? Huh? They, they do it by district here? They, no, they, basically they, they're going to say, you know, this school can determine whether they want to have guns, allow guns or not, okay? So how do we know which ones do and which ones don't? We yeah. need the laws to be consistent no matter where we go, okay? How, how and do that's we, a problem. How, yeah, it's you House want... Bill 101 and House Bill 564. Yeah. Both of them are going to regulate. Um, House Bill 101 is the one that uh, will let the school yeah. board Oops. determine. Did you move a little closer? Oh, uh. Uh, 101 will allow the school boards to dictate if they're going to be gun-free or not. And 564, it'll just <clears throat> prohibit firearms mm -hmm. at at the schools. Now you see that the preemption laws is what prevents the schools from doing this right now. Yes. Okay. If we didn't have the preemption laws, the schools could do anything they wanted. Right. Okay. But if the schools did ban guns, okay, they would be in violation of state law. And right. that, and they don't like that. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I'd really like to hear from, you know, how, how some of these teachers in the schools, I mean, we've had scares right here in this, in Manchester. Yes. Mm -hmm. Recently. Yeah, right. Uh, you know what goes yep. through their heads? What are they thinking? What, what would they thinking? I'm not doing that again. I really think there's something that should be dis different. And who's listening to them? Yeah. You know, I think every once in a while, you heads. I mean, your minds do change, mm -hmm. but for the most part, um, face it, most educators are liberals. <laughs> there's no, you know, probably ninety percent. I, I think of anybody can, can be converted with being in a situation like that pretty quickly. And <laughs> yes, if, yeah. if the fear of God does it, yeah, sometimes that does happen, but it doesn't happen all that often. It but really from doesn't. but from my knowledge, and correct me, Bob, if I am wrong, I believe you have to have a conceal a New Hampshire concealed carry license and be a New Hampshire citizen to carry in a New Hampshire school. Yes. Okay. You do. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way yeah. federal law is written yeah. that, that yes. you have to have that that so to revolve a license. So constitutional carry that we passed um, does mm -hmm. not you know is not effective in the school. Right. You know, because okay. because federal that's... law supersedes you know, it shouldn't, but it, it mm -hmm. somehow it supersedes Yeah, that's another whole topic. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I just want you know, people you, to you, be aware. You would that, think they would you know, worry about the age limit in New Hampshire. There is no age limit in New Hampshire. New Hampshire gun law does not talk about age at all. So this is interesting. So. You, you just said something, and I don't want to open a huge can of worms here, but the schools in New Hampshire and every state 
are under federal law? I believe when it comes to the guns, yes. Yeah, yeah. New Hampshire has no laws about guns in schools except for students. Students cannot bring guns into schools or guns or other weapons, okay? That in New Hampshire law is an automatic one-year suspension. Other than that, there is nothing in New Hampshire RSAs that talks about guns in schools. We rely totally on federal law. Okay, federal law says that if you have a pistol revolver license or a permit or is issued by a law enforcement authority in your state, then you can carry in schools unless there's a state law that says you can't. But we don't have one. Right. <laughs> well, we have a comment that so. says, good morning. Hi, honey. <laughs> it's south, not sout. Huh? <laughs> That's for you. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I know we're back on topic. <laughs> hey, we got to respond to so, our audience. Yes. Yeah, right. We love yeah. our audience. Uh, if you if you do have some comments, uh, questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. We will respond yeah. to them, or you can call us at three eight four three five three five. Love to hear from you, uh, especially regarding laws. Now we're not lawyers; we don't claim to be or anything, no. but. Um, would you be considered a lawmaker, though? I am. Of course he is. He's a lawmaker. <laughs> so he has a little bit of a authority as far as, you know, yeah. understanding the laws. Well, and I do sit on the criminal justice committee. Okay, you do. Yes. Okay, well, and that... It's a great committee. Uh, well, from what I hear, it is. It's been yes. doing some great work. Yeah. Um, so recently, um, we saw in the news at the State House that uh. they ban your right to conceal carry there. You're right to carry. Period. Just on the House floor. So it's the House floor gallery, and then there's an anteroom, as they call it, uh, where the reps can meet and chat privately. Okay. So, so where are you those... supposed to take off and put your firearm in there? That's uh, well, that's never safe. Well, allegedly there's lockers downstairs. <laughs> so on January 2nd, I got up on the House floor, and I said, I'm going to still carry. You know, you, you might be in the minority, but, you know, I don't really care. I'm going to still carry. And because it's within your legal right to do yes. so. Yes. Yeah. And this is just a rule. It's not the Constitution. Constitution, in my eyes, will supersede silly rules that a minority or majority party passes. That's in. Mm-hmm. And, and you need to know what those are. Yes. So. Well, what was really funny is the next House session we had, which was a couple weeks following, I come out and there's NPR sticks a mic in my face, and they said, "John, were you carrying?" And we are filing a lawsuit against the speaker on this. I saw that, yeah. Uh, And I said, well, there is a lawsuit going forward, so I don't know if I really should answer, but let me point out one thing. I think I was very clear on January 2nd. Yes. And uh, he goes, well, we just want a yes or a no. I said, I think I was very clear on January 2nd what my intent is. Yeah. And and I know Democrats and Republicans are still Mm -hmm. carrying. Yeah. Right. And you are law-abiding citizens, obviously. Mm. Yes. And and this is where the problem comes in. When we talk about concealed carry and uh, persons, we already have the rights for, to do that. Mm-hmm. But you, you're you saying that the problem is because of the, sc- the, the laws of the schools? I mean, when, when you're talking about concealed carry, mm-hmm. you want to talk about it. You said it's a lifestyle change, things like that. What else yeah. about it do you want people to know? Um, is is Well— one is take the training. Training is going to save, you know, okay. training does save lives, okay? Uh, you know, when we are carrying, we don't want to be skimping, okay? We want to buy a good holster for our, okay? Yeah. Uh, you, you don't go out and buy a, you know, an $8 Uncle Mike's holster and that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, do it right. Well, one big thing, so. too, on training, you know, I have, you know, I got a lot of gun friends on Facebook, a lot. And occasionally they'll, you know, there'll be one of them that says, you know, if somebody breaks into my house, they're getting a bullet first. Oh, geez. And That's not smart. You know what? Uh, you know, my bedroom's upstairs. We have a big balcony sure. that goes out into the house, um, you know, with a <coughs> high ceiling in the front. Now, if somebody was lugging my TV out, I'm not going to be very happy. And I'm going to have my gun with me, and I'm going to tell them to leave. Hurry up. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can go buy a new TV. I'm not going to kill the person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what training will do is it will get that, you know, you know, that attitude that, you know, you know, pull your gun first. And I mean, you you got to be ready. But now if somebody was walking up the stairs mm-hmm. and said, John, we're here to hurt your wife 
uh, you know, then game is on. That's a different story. You yeah, know, I really, I really love that you brought this up because, you know, Bob and I talk about this all the time, that a firearm is a tool of last resort. Absolutely. Last, pe- last. We have pepper spray. There's a lot of things. You can yell at someone, be, you know, if you're, you have safe distance. Yeah. It's only when you're feeling your life or the life of the, your loved ones is in danger that you would even resort to that. Absolutely. And you would do it not mm-hmm. wanting to do it, but you have only if you have to. Yes. And, and we need to stick with that line of thinking because in the at the end of the day, we talked about yeah. law, about knowing your rights and how to protect yourself from prosecution and things like that because you still have to go through the, the well, system, and, justice system. You will be arrested if you shoot somebody lugging a TV out of your house oh, yeah. because you're going to have to mm-hmm. prove that your life was in danger. Well, lugging a TV out of your house is not in danger. I, I saw mean, You might not be unhappy, but... It, it's an interesting because I saw a post from a very well-known two-way community just yesterday or the day before of Mm -hmm. a boy who was 11 years old who shot uh, someone who came in the house, stole stuff, and he shot him as he was leaving in the leg. Uh. And everybody's like, oh, good job and everything. And I, all the two A's are saying good job. And I wrote under there, if this was an adult, that would not have been a good job. Right. Yes. There was no threat when when you were treating. Okay. Yeah. So we have, this is where, this is where people who are ignorant without training give those who are anti-gunners ammunition, <laughs> yes. lack of a better word, ammunition against sensible, responsible firearm owners. Absolutely it does. And so this is the difference. I would say more people are responsible firearm owners. They take they take the, the training, they, whatever. And then there are other people who Bob yeah. would say, you probably shouldn't have a firearm. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And there yep. are people like that, okay? And because it's it's very important because we are going to be judged on those few people that make mistakes, okay, as we always are, all right? So the gun community does need to police their own, all right? Because when one guy sets off in, in a Florida school, we're all going to suffer because of it. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and, and obviously that is not fair we can compare this and we have to other things like drunk driving or driving and texting and there's a lot of things is the is the car it is the car going to be banned is the phone going to be banned we could go on and on it's just silly and gun control is like taking cars away from sober drivers to stop drunken driving it doesn't make any sense whatsoever it really really (laughs) doesn't because a, a gun on its own can't do anything it's right. in the hands of long But, you know, concealed carry, <laughs> if you do it properly, almost nobody will know that you do you right. have it. Now, yeah. I do occasionally will scan the, you know, area. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell if you look, you know, if somebody's concealed carrying. In, in, in some cases, not all cases. And uh, so, you know, it just yeah. makes me feel, mm-hmm. you know, warmer if I know there's other people that are carrying. Yeah, I took I took a class on that. I actually think I took two. I took I took one which was a training class uh actual physical drawing from the holster, yes. things like that. And then I took another one which was in a class with the laws and all that stuff and learning yeah. it. But yeah. very interesting stuff. And it now I make, you know, it actually makes you safer. Yes. <laughs> now I do do one thing that some people disagree with me. I do open carry occasionally. And I know some people in the, you know, the gun community say, John, you shouldn't do it. And, you know, but there's a lot of people that open carry and, Mm -hmm. you know, I I don't see any issue with it. Uh, But, you know, I know there is, you know, the gun community has, you know, debates on it. Sometimes when I when I see it, if I'm out in a restaurant or something and I see it and I said, "Okay, great. I know he's got my left side. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Well, yeah, because you're a gun owner. Okay, But when uh, a anti-gunner. Mm-hmm. Sees it, a Democrat or someone who doesn't like guns, okay? Like a red hat? Uh, yeah, like a red hat. Yes. <laughs> it triggers them. Triggers them. Okay. <laughs> All uh, these puns today. <laughs> and yeah, and when they do get triggered, things happen. Right. Okay. Uh, there was a woman, there was a man who was carrying, open carrying at a woman's Portman Center. Uh, he was bringing his girlfriend in for a uh, an appointment. Open carrying. He went in, and the p- lady behind the counter, Okay, calls the police and says, there's a guy here with a gun. He's waving it around. He wasn't waving it. It was a full tactical SWAT response, okay, because of this woman. And after they interviewed everybody, he never, it never came out of the holster. Okay, and I hope she was prosecuted. She wasn't. 
Because <laughs> they're prosecuting this one they guy, right? getting away with it. Who's that right. guy they're prosecuting now? I think he's in New York City or he's an actor. Or he's an, Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's another day's story. Yes. We're actually yeah. almost out of time, but I want to give I you, you know, if you have something right. that you want to close out with, I'm happy to. What people should know about this? Do you want to act on the bills or? Well, yeah, what, you know, we, you know, we've had all the hearings on the House side. Um, sadly, these anti-gun bills. If you follow me on Facebook, it's John Burt. I have just a private page, uh, but it's open to everybody. The problem is most of these bills will pass the House because it's a Democrat controlled. It's chances are it's going to pass the Senate. Now, Governor Sununu personally told me to make sure that everybody emails him saying that this is wrong for New Hampshire, do not do it, and he will get his red pen out and veto these. Right. All right, so you heard, everybody hear that? Email this, the governor. <laughs> yes. Okay, so someone just said that name you were looking for is Kitty Smollett. That's oh, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. All right, we are out of time, Bob. You want right. to give some contact information so people can yeah. take some training. You can find us at defensestrategies.org or call me directly at 603-566-1727. Have a good week. All right, well, we are going to take a short break. Support those who support us. We'll be right back, tell you what's coming up tomorrow. Stay tuned. Morgan Self Storage has been serving Manchester and Salem, New Hampshire for over 15 years. Facilities are heated with security and video surveillance in well-lit hallways, easy access loading, and high-capacity elevators. With many sized units, portable trailers, and boxes for moving, we can meet your residential or business storage needs. 400 Bedford Street in Manchester or 8 Willow Street in Salem. Visit morganstorage.com or call us at 603-623-2000. Morgan Self Storage, making self storage secure, safe, and easy. CrossNet Inc. offers computer and IT services for commercial clients as well as local personal users. We create tailor made plans for your business's unique needs, from computer repairs to managing networks, servers, and desktops. CrossNet Inc. offers managed services, data backups, virus protection, web filtering, and more. For more information, go to CrossNetInc.com or call for your personalized IT services today at 603-589-2520. CrossNet Inc., IT services that keep your business running when you're on the run. Hi, this is Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and Coach Trainer at AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. Join me Mondays at 9 a.m. where I'll talk about ways to help keep you moving forward in life. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Well, that concludes today's Personal Safety Day. If you want to join me Friday, I'm going to have special guest Stacey Bergeron and Bernadette Trafton here from Boxes of Love for the Homeless. You don't want to miss that. So we'll be back uh, um, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Have a blessed day. And remember, we are in it together.